necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. So properly moved and seconded. Uh, Director Cooper, will you take the roll call vote, please? Ms. Ma'am, Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Druffle? Aye. Glover? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Porterfield is absent. Roten? Sledge? Aye. Suara? Syracuse? Aye. Toombs? Aye. Vercher? Aye. Young? That's nine in favor, zero against. That is a quorum. All right, fantastic. Uh, moving on to the consent agenda. Um, as usual, if there are any items on consent that need to be pulled off, please raise your hand. The items on the consent agenda are resolution 2021-806, 807, 808, 811, 812, 813, 814, 815, 817, 818, 819, 820, 825, and 826. Does anything need to come off before I read the captions? Councilwoman Bircher. 806, please. All right. Are there any others? All right, I don't see any other hands, so I will read the captions. Resolution 2021-807, Toombs and Gamble approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security and the Davidson County Sheriff's Office for the Commercial Driver, Lic Driver License Third-Party Testing Program. Resolution 2021-808, Pulley, Toombs and Murphy approves a lease extension between the Davidson County Clerk's Office and Grace's Plaza LTD for office space at 4009 Hillsboro Pike. Resolution 2021-809, Toombs, no, not that one, sorry. Resolution 2021-810, goodness gracious, 811, my apologies, Suara, Toombs and Allen approves an amendment to two grant contracts for construction affordable housing between the Metro Housing Trust Fund Commission and Crossroads Campus and Westminster Home Connection. Resolution 2021-812, Suara, Toombs, Taylor and Welsh approves an amendment to a sub-recipient grant agreement from the Metro Development and Housing Agency to the Metro Action Commission to address rent and mortgage assistance for up to three months for eligible households resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. Resolution 2021-813, Toombs and Gamble approves a Victims of Crime Act grant from the Tennessee Department of Finance and Administration to the Metro Nashville Office of Family Safety to fund office equipment purchases. Resolution 2021-814, Toombs, Gamble, and Suara approves an, improve, approves an improving criminal justice response to domestic and dating violence, sexual assault, and stalking grant from the U.S. Department of Justice to the Metro Office of Family Safety to expand high-risk coordinated community response teams to reduce the risk of homicide and address high-risk victimization. Resolution 2021-815, Toombs, Taylor, and Welsh approves an amendment to a contract between the Metro Board of Health and Vanderbilt University Medical Center to participate as a member site in the CDC Tuberculosis Trials Consortium Studies. Resolution 2021-817, Toombs, Taylor, Welsh, and Bradford approves an amendment to a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health to provide HIV AIDS core medical services and early intervention services. Resolution 2021-818, Toombs, Terry Lynn Welsh approves a contract between the Metro Board of Health and Nurture the Next to provide funding for a program coordinator for the Collective Impact Initiative ACE Nashville. Resolution 2021-819, Toombs and Gamble approves an emergency medical service ambulance assistance program grant from Horn LLP to the Metro Nashville Fire Department for the purchase and installation of ambulance lighting. Resolution 820, Toombs and Gamble approves a homeland security grant from the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency to the Metro Office of Emergency Management to fund costs related to enhancing cyber risk assessment, terrorism prevention, catastrophic event response, and environmental hazards. 
Resolution 2021-825, Hall, Toombs, Murphy, and Nash, approves the intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Metro Department of Water and Sewer Services to construct Clarksville Highway from Ashton City Highway to Riley Parkway. Resolution 2021-826, Young, Toombs, and Nash, approves an amendment to the cooperative agreement with the United States Department of Agriculture, National Resources Conservation Service to stabilize the stream banks and protect the main sewer line along Mansker Creek near Old Springfield Pike in Davidson County. Are there any items that need to come off of consent? Councilwoman Bircher. Thank you, Madam Chair. Also, um, uh, eight, 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 twelve. I'm sorry. Eight, twelve. Okay. All right, so once again, that's resolution 807, res ugh, resolution 2021, 807, 808, 811, 813, 814, 815, 817, 818, 819, 820, 825, and 826. Can I get a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Director Cooper, will you take the roll call vote, please? Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Druffel? Aye. Glover? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Sledge? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. Toombs? Aye. Vercher? Aye. Sure, that's number young. Is that, that's nine in favor, zero against. All right, motion carries. Moving on to resolution 2021-794, Rutherford, Nash, and Allen approves a memorandum of understanding to transfer solid waste disposal responsibilities from the Department of Public Works to the Department of Water and Sewer Services, along with the related operational activities, personnel, and equipment. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Councilman Mendez. Thanks, Chair. Um, I guess I just wanted to express where I'm at um, right now, and then if a uh, discussion changes my mind, I'm, I'll keep it. I'll keep an open eye um, for that. But um, where I start on this is that, uh, um, first of all, I, I think there's widespread agreement that we ought to end up with the Department of Transportation at some point. This legislation has um, been called by some as creating the Department of Transportation, which objectively it, it, it does not do. It doesn't say that anywhere in the legislation. And, um, and, and I appreciate all the administration's work, but there's some amount of us being asked to accept on faith a partially completed plan and um, and, and that accepting it on faith involves moving a significant and important part of the Metro government waste collection um, to Metro Water Services on some sort of interim or test basis. We've been told that that can just get moved back um, at some point in the future if uh, appropriate charter amendment isn't passed or if for whatever reason the plan doesn't pan out. I'm uncomfortable. Um, with that approach um, for a couple of different reasons. Um, one is it is such a significant um, uh, piece of, of government um, and, and what the city does with the government. And then in um, trying to figure out what exactly why um, I'm not willing to um, take the, the leap here um, on faith, can't get around um, the fact that the department that is supposed to house um, the trash collection, at least on an interim or test basis, Metro Water Services, as a director um, who actively participated in hiding the ball uh, from the council in 2018 and 2019 that his department was in financial distress with the state of Tennessee. And, uh, and frankly, that um, I said it when we went through the water rate stuff, I've intimated at other times, I'll say it again, 
um, that substantially um, diminished my trust in the director. And if part of accepting on faith um, that we're headed toward a Department of Transportation um, at some point involves um, putting this important function and expanding the portfolio of the director of the department, um, my trust isn't really there for that. And, um, and, and I, again, I'm gonna keep an open ear and listen to the rest of what we have to say, but at least as of right now, I'm not in a position where I can support um, this resolution. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Druffel. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, I would only uh, ask, I have not had a chance to take a look at this in, in more depth and ask if the sponsors would consider at least a deferment for a little bit more study uh, so that I, at least I know for myself I could become more comfortable. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Um, let me move on to the other council council persons in the queue. Uh, Councilman Glover. Thank you, Chair. Mine boils down to a simple uh, question of how much money are we gonna save doing this? I don't see anything that says we're saving money, number one. Number two, um, we're, we, until we get a charter amendment, we really can't do this. I mean, I, I realize we're trying to do an end around. Um, whether, you know, I, I, I think that uh, what we ran across with the water department, I'm not certain you can put your finger on one person there. I think administration had a lot to do with that at the time, but I don't understand why we feel like we need to do this because I don't see any cost savings to the taxpayers. And anytime we wanna create a bigger government, all it tells me is that we're gonna have a greater cost to the taxpayer. So I won't be supporting this. Even if it's deferred, I still won't be supporting it until the taxpayers say and they vote on it and they make a charter amendment that says, yes, they agree that this is what we should do. So I think this requires a the administration to make a compelling argument for why this is the right thing to do for Nashville right now. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilwoman Bercher. Thank you, Chair. Uh, many of my colleagues have expressed um, uh, many of my same thoughts regarding this, but uh, really one that, that, that sticks out to me is that um, this MOU uh, sets the ball rolling for a lot of things that's tied to creating a Department of Transportation. In the analysis itself, it states that this MOU is the initial step towards creating a Metro Department of Transportation. Also in our analysis, um, and to add to my level of, of discomfort and, and uncertainty uh, as it relates to this, there's still too much that's unknown um, as it relates to uh, creating uh, this, this, this MOU. Um, we've done MOUs in the past, um, not, uh, not in, the, in the vein of trying to, to circumvent the charter though. So um, if, if we want this to, uh, my, if, we, if, we, if we want this to happen, uh, let, let's follow the charter and, and let's, let, let's put it to a vote to, uh, to the citizens of Nashville. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Councilwoman Allen. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I have a, a couple of questions. I'm not uh, entirely sure who they're who they're for, but hopefully they'll step forward. Um, number one, my understanding is that creating uh, the Department of Transportation has several advantages. One one is simply to have everything under one roof, and another is that it enhances our ability to apply for grants so that we can leverage our funding with other additional funding. Um, and if there's someone either from public works or finance who can speak to, um, if, I'm, if I'm understanding that correctly and, and how, that, um, how that process being started now as opposed to waiting two years for, or, for a charter amendment or spending a million dollars on a special election, 
what the financial consequences of being able to to take advantage of having a Department of Transportation that may increase our chances at um, at being more successful in, in leveraging our, our money. And then I have another question after that. Okay. Director Cooper, who from finance is, is on here? I, I forgot the person. I think um, Kim McDonald, I, I believe, is answering the finance questions. Can you respond? Can you respond to that? Uh, yes, ma'am, or um, uh, I believe Kevin Crumbo is on, or Faye Damasio might be able to better answer that specific question. Okay. It's kind of a hybrid uh, finance slash transportation plan question. Uh, Ms. Damasio, do you want to take a stab at it first? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Council Member, um, for the recognition. Um, I will... Um, Answer first, and then Mr. Crumbo can certainly um, add add to this explanation. So, very similar to the concept of having a plan that enabled us to be more competitive, having an organizational structure that is already aimed at the planning through delivery um, of projects it also is a part of enhancing our competitiveness for grants. It demonstrates our capability, our accountability, and so forth. And I think um, Council um, Mendez uh, question and comment at one of the previous meetings around, does this create a Department of Transportation right now? No, it does not. It creates a structure that we can begin to build upon towards the charter amendment that's been recognized by many. But in the meantime, it is true that the reforming of the organizational structure enables us to begin to align ourselves very directly towards the aspirations that council has already endorsed in the transportation plan, the competitive grants that will enable it to be implemented, and the um, demonstration that we have an organizational structure that, that recognizes that we want to achieve a multimodal uh, system here in Metro Nashville and that we've organized ourselves to accomplish that. Now, I'll defer further to, uh, to Mr. Crumbo. Yeah, Chair, uh, I'll just uh, add to these remarks by saying, you know, at this moment, we've got uh, transportation uh, issues spread across the metro government. And I think anytime we can uh, take a singular topic like that and round it up into uh, one place so that, you know, we can get some leadership behind that and start establishing a president and um, applying for some of the grants and things that uh, Mr. Mosma has identified would be a really good thing for us. Um, you know, waiting two years for a charter amendment and waiting for things to be uh, just perfect. Uh, that's pretty far out into a future at a time where we're attempting to come back from a pandemic. Uh, we have a new president in office, new Congress and so forth that seems uh, willing to invest in our infrastructure. And I, I just really support uh, Ms. Demosmo there and her efforts to round that up and give us that singular uh, effort to, to move forward. And I'll just uh, stop there. I think in some of the other committee meetings, you've covered a lot of the details of a PowerPoint that uh, Mr. Mosmo has uh, offered in the past and some of the things that support that. One other thing I would add very quickly to Mr. Crumbo's comments, because he, he noted something that, um, that I should have included as well, is it's really important that we recruit um, a visionary director. We all know that we're in an interim director situation right now. And a, a public works department um, structure is really um, not as uh, uh, not doesn't enable us to have that sort of modern Department of Transportation structure that enables us to recruit um, for that bright visionary that we know that we want to have in the leadership position um, to lead this um, organization and to lead all of our efforts um, to our success. Thank you. That's helpful, Madam Chair. Can I ask my second question? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I appreciate those answers. That that uh, gives, gives me a little bit more understanding of why, why this matters and why it matters now, which is helpful. Um, and the second question was with regard to um, moving part of public works to um, stormwater. My understanding is that we did this with stormwater a couple of years ago in the same order that we're considering doing this, that so we did a memorandum of understanding and, and followed with the charter amendment were the, can someone speak to why that process went in that order and if there were any um any issues with doing it that way mr uh, james 
Uh, that is correct. Uh, thank you, Council uh, Member Toombs, and that is correct, Council Member Allen. The uh, in initial MOU for the stormwater transfer was in 2002. That was done at a time before the code required any MOUs um, transferring assets of 500,000 or more having to come before the council. So the only amendment you eventually saw was the amendment creating the subsequent uh, charter amendments proposal. That was done um, 10 years later. Uh, they floated along just under the strength of the MOU for stormwater uh, for about 10 years, but then the charter amendment passed in 2012. Um, the only other analogous situation I can conceive of was the um, IT department, which actually used to be uh, a function of Metro Finance, uh, and then that was carved out um, uh, uh, separately as well. <clears throat> okay, thank you. That So it sounds like there's a, a successful precedent. That's just helpful to know for context. Thank you. Councilman Glover. Thank you, Chair. Yes. Uh, all right. I, all right. So I'm still confused. Uh, I, maybe I heard something incorrectly. Uh, Mr. Cooper, would this require it to have a special uh, election in order for it to go on for a charter amendment if we do it in 2022? Uh, if we did it in 2021, um, there are there are no scheduled elections in 21, but there are in 22. Right. And so, I mean, I, I don't know what this great emergency is, but I think that, um, I mean, I'm not going to support it because I don't, I've not heard anybody tell me how much money we're going to save, you know, and anytime we start talking about making government bigger, that just means more money. And so until I can hear a logical reason for what this is going to accomplish and how much the taxpayers are going to save, and then what kind of guarantee do they have down the road that all of a sudden there's not going to be another fee structure that comes on, on, uh, on their backs, then I, I just think that there's a lot of unanswered questions. And I really believe when we start getting into these kind of things where it requires a charter amendment, we really need to let the people vote and speak. So, uh, I, but I, I just was trying to clarify that. So if we, if this waits until 22, if the people want to do it, they could vote for it. It wouldn't cost us a penny. Is that correct, Mr. Cooper? Uh, correct. As long as it's with another election that's already being held, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Are there any other folks that want to comment or ask? Mr. Jameson, your hand is still up. You have additional comment? Oh, okay. Sorry about that, Count. Councilwoman Henderson. Uh, thank you, Chair Toombs. I appreciate you uh, recognizing me as I, I no longer serve on, on budget and finance, but I did um, want to kind of expand on some questions that came up um, in the special committee. I feel like many of us, we kind of had a hard stop at, at, at five on the specially called meeting. And I felt like Councilman Mendez and Councilman O'Connell um, had raised some things in the financial space that I, I didn't quite feel like we got um, closure on. Um, I, I think what I'm struggling with is, as Councilman Mendez alluded to, um, I support the evolution to a Department of Transportation. Um, I, I think that makes sense. Um, I question the kind of the, the, the strategy and the communication around making all of that predicated on the move of trash over to water and kind of what some of those logistical and financial management um, things will be uh, once on that side. And so I, I wonder if um, whether it's Mr. Crumbo again or, or Ms. Whitelaw or perhaps Ms. Uh, Deaton Moyer in water um, could kind of speak to, I, I think there are some, you know, things like an enterprise fund and pay as you throw and, and things that have been kind of uh, out there for just general kind of hypothetical discussion that given um, people's kind of skepticism and concern generally with government, um, with Metro, where we are with our finances, with the water rate change and all of those things, what I'm hearing from constituents is even in this moment, if we're saying that moving trash 
over to water will not incur extra charges and fees. I think it is still somewhat outstanding, but what would it mean five years from now or 10 years from now? I, I feel like there's this feeling of waiting kind of for the other shoe to drop because, you know, have we appropriately priced kind of the services as we have now? Currently, I mean, we had not priced water, um, you know, correctly for many years. And so I just think there's a level of skepticism and concern that this is a pivotal moment. And if we make this move, maybe in the next few years, we're not going to see extra cost, but um, in, in time, there might be that. I, th I think to Council Virtue's point, there's just a lot of unanswered questions and details, um, particular to the financial piece um, of water uh, taking on trash. And so um, if, if folks could kind of lean into that and speak to that more at a detailed level, um, I think it would help a lot of council members in the community understand this better. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilwoman Henderson. Um, Ms. Whitelaw, do you want to speak to that? Yes, um, thank you, Chair. Um, very similar to what Mr. Jamison said about with stormwater. Um, when stormwater moved to water, there was no fees and stormwater was continued to be funded from the GSD and the USD until 10 years later or seven years later, the council enacted a fee structure for stormwater. So there is no ability for the charges and the fees associated to solid waste to be changed without council approval. So um, that is well, something with that- all, With all due respect, Ms. Whitelaw, again, sure. that, Council gets thrown over under the bus then, right? Because, I mean, again, with the water rate change and, you know, for all of uh, the administration, previous mayoral administration and Director Potter's awareness of their, that our finances were not um, in line there, Council was unaware of that. And so I think what we're asking you is, you know, to say that we moved stormwater over to water from public works and it wasn't until 10 years later that council voted on a stormwater fee and that that somehow is a good thing. I, I think what we're wanting to understand, we recognize there will be another threshold moment where we might have to vote on financial particulars and that those could not happen without our, uh, 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 our vote. But, you know, we were presented with an untenable situation, particular to water, and we were effectively the comptroller told us, like, you have to vote for this. So, um, again, I'm not saying these are 100% analogous, but I think the council is very wary to be put in that position again, where we do not have an independent water board. Um, we do not have strong um, committee oversight um, in the council body. Um, you know, we have a 40 member part time body that has to over have oversight for the water department and the public works department out of one committee. And so, you know, to say that, you know, everybody keeps using this stormwater transfer as analogous and then, you know, later we had to come back and add a stormwater fee. Um, it's something that I think is an okay fee. I try to tell my constituents that we're seeing that fee. Um, utilized in, in culverts and work and, you know, we're doing good work with that money. But again, that's that other shoe that's going to drop that people are skeptical about. So if you could perhaps frame this in a way that, you know, again, just because there's going to be another time in the future, I, I need to understand why there's not going to be another time in the future that we're going to have to be changing fee structures. What is an enterprise fund? What are, what are you all intending if trash is in water vis-a-vis -vis people's tax rates and fees and so forth that they're going to pay. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Henderson. Um, the possibility of an enterprise fund or fees for solid waste is independent on whether solid waste is in underwater services or still under public works services. So it, it, it could stay inside public works. We could continue um, the department as is, and this could still be a question. I agree with you completely that cost of service is something for the service that is provided needs to be done. One thing that um, it will be tied to right now is the USD property taxes. So if a cost of services study is done, 
and it turns out that property taxes in the USD are not covering it, that is one area that could be changed and would be something that would go before council um, as well to change property taxes. So the cost of services for solid waste and how solid waste is paid for in trash collection and recycling and those activities is independent of where solid waste actually is, is operated out of. So um, from that standpoint, um, whether it's the shoe that drops underwater or the shoe that drops under public works or the shoe that drops under some other department, that's related to the cost of the service that is being provided. So it's not an enterprise fund. It can still continue to be out of the GF, the USD as a service with collection for um, at the transfer stations out of the GSD. So I think that is uh, what I was trying to communicate was that um, Cost of service for solid waste needs to be addressed. Um, the things that are aspirational related to sustainability and the things that come from the sustainability committee, things that come from the zero master plan regarding what we as a city want for our solid waste and our recycling and the things that we're trying to do with zero um, waste to landfills and those sorts of things. Those costs are whether, no matter where they come from. So how we fund that is, is, is something that has to be decided. And I don't believe that it's related to whether it is underwater, if it's under public works, or it's under it's, you know, something else. Does that, does that help to answer your question? Is there some more I could help with? I, I, I think rather than, um, you know, for a change that is this monumental, I appreciate the points that you're making. I think Again, just given the general um, skepticism, it's it's kind of like, you know, we don't want to be proving a negative, right? I mean, it's more like kind of proactively saying, you know, these sustainability efforts, if we were to implement, you know, pay as you throw, or we were to implement these things, we would anticipate this would be done this way. Like, I just think there's a lot kind of out in the future um, I appreciate your your position is that whether it is under the umbrella of public works or uh, water um, does not matter particular to cost. Um, but I'm I'm not sure that's that might be eighty percent true. I'm just not sure that that's entirely true. Um, I'm I'm not refuting what you're saying. I just think there's still a level of skepticism about that. And as such, I just feel like it's incumbent upon us as fiscal stewards to, you know, really get into the weeds and explain to people, you know, why not or why it, you know, how it could be done. So um, I, I appreciate your response. Thank you. Councilman Druffel. Yeah, Chair, thanks. I would go back to my recommendation if one of the sponsors would consider uh, deferring this for a period of time to allow us to, to really vet this a lot more. Um, I have, I have questions and um, uh, clearly everybody else does. So uh, I would again ask uh, one of the sponsors to defer this for a period of time to allow us to really understand this. As everybody's indicated, this is a pretty significant move. Uh, we need to make sure uh, these questions are answered. Thank you. Councilman Druffel, would you like to make a motion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that uh, we defer this uh, in, in, uh, two meetings that allow us to have uh, some further conversation. Thank you. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that we defer this um, agenda item for two meetings. Is there any discussion on the deferral motion? Councilwoman Allen. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. I just uh, want to find out if there are any time, time issues that we need to be aware of as we talk about this. I appreciate the request for more information, I think that's good. I uh, just want to check and see if there's any anything pending that it will affect, if anyone can answer that. Uh, Director Cooper, are you aware of any time issues? There may be a question for Mr. Jamison. I, I would just refer that to the administration. Mr. Jamison? No, uh, Madam Chair, um, and our preference would be to make sure uh, people are as comfortable with this as possible. So if it's a if it's a one meeting deferral and if there's uh, further interest in a uh, further meeting on this and maybe one that is not 
restricted at an hour. Um, both of those are, uh, I won't tell you we're excited about it, but uh, again, want council members to be comfortable. So we uh, certainly understand uh, the deferral request. And the motion on the floor is a two meeting deferral, not one, it's a two meeting. Yeah, Chair, I, I made it two just to make sure that we had plenty of time to, that, uh, to have that conversation. I am open uh, if we think we can do that without limitations within a one meeting, but uh, it sounds like this is important enough just to ensure that we have a full meeting that's not restricted within an hour. Thank you. Madam Chair, this is yes. one of those months where the next meeting is actually three weeks away and not two weeks away because it's a five Tuesday March. So um, only because of uh, how if, if the DOT um, features into the operating budget, the more time we have between the final consideration of this and submission of the budget, would I, uh, would I ever think to go back to ask Councilman Druffel if he would consider making that a one meeting deferral? Uh, Chair, I'm, I'm good with a one meeting referral, re recognizing we have three weeks, uh, as long as we can get that committee meeting uh, or a meeting to reflect on. Thank you. So I'll go back and make a one meeting referral at this point. Director Cooper, do we need another second? Since he's changing his motion. Yes, ma'am. Second. All right, it's been properly moved and seconded for a one meeting deferral. Any discussion on the one meeting deferral motion? Councilman Glover. Thank you, Chair. I, I think we also, because I think we just heard the answer. If we pass this and then it moves forward, whether we defer one meeting or we defer two meetings, I don't think that we've heard uh, the uh, definitive answer as to what this will mean for fees. I'm telling you, when it moves to an enterprise fund, this past year was a great example for us on what happened with stormwater, uh, stormwater fees and then a massive tax increase. So I think unless there's a lot of assurities there, we're not doing a service to our taxpayers by just supporting this because we think it might be an okay idea or the DOT may give us something that we certainly don't know what is what at this point. So, uh, I mean, I just think there's a lot of questions that have to be answered and I'm, I'm happy to support it again, but more importantly, until we get the charter amendment and it's passed, I don't think we should be heading down this path. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Mendez. Thanks, Chair. Um, I feel, I hate to delay this, but I, I feel compelled to go back to um, ask Mr. Jamison for a clarification of something he just said. Um, and, and something he said went to the core of part of my concern and what I hear Councilmember Henderson saying, like, I don't understand how this resolution could conceivably impact the operating budget and based on what we've been told. And Mr. Jameson just made the argument that it should come back in three weeks instead of five weeks because it might impact the operating budget. And I, I just got to ask, what about this could conceivably impact the uh, operating budget? Mr. Jameson, do you want to respond to that? Yes, ma'am. I will. I will take the initial stab, and then uh, may call upon our finance director and finance members to chime in. Um, and I guess to back up and answer both Councilman Glover's and Councilman Mendez's questions, if I can uh, take that stab, um, th there are no fee changes, and there is no enterprise fund that is created by uh, the MOU. Um, the, the other morning driving in, I noticed what had to be described as the first traffic jam I've seen in a year. And uh, I imagine that is going to increasingly uh, become the case as the months pass and as the vaccines are distributed. And as people begin to wonder again, what are we doing about the uh, Department of Transportation? And to the extent we can have any semblance of a model in place before a charter amendment vote in August of 22, uh, be it one created by MOU or that results de facto from an MOU, I think that places the council and the administration in a better position vis-a-vis -vis, um, the public. 
in terms of how the DOT that would eventually be the result of transferring solid waste responsibilities out from under public works, there would eventually be a director retained and that individual would probably be the result of a large scale search and the funding for that would be necessary. And if that can be included within this year's budget, I'm somewhat uh, in the weeds in terms of um, uh, my ability to predict how that's structured under the finance or under the proposed budget. But we need to decide uh, if we have a director um, and how shared services and internal services funding would feature into that. With that, I would uh, turn it over to either Director Crumbo or Ms. McDonnell if they have any other comments. Yeah, so this is uh, Director Crumbo. I really don't have uh, a lot to add to that, uh, but just put an exclamation point on the um, planning that needs to go with transportation along lead times that are associated with that. And, you know, making the attempt here to start rounding up uh, what's, you know, transportation widespread across the metro government at this point. So I don't envision that uh, this next budget would have enormous and, you know, uh, big budget impacts, but rather it would be tricky to go ahead and get a start on that. And there's certainly other ways we can accomplish those things, but um, I really like the way that uh, Mr. Mosmo has laid this out, and I think it starts uh, leading us to a good place. And, you know, the truth is uh, you can't finish what you don't start, and I would like to see us get started on this uh, as soon as possible. I just think it's important for the future of the city for us to get started planning uh, a little harder than we have been now. Um, if I may follow up, Chair. Um, and I, I don't know whether this is for Mr. Jameson or um, Mr. Crumbo or somebody else, but I mean, I, I'll just ask directly. I mean, this, this, this resolution on its face says no change in cost. It's just moving a certain dollar amount from one pile to another. And I know from being budget chair that the finance folks could have that done inside of 12 hours, um, depending on where the money resides um, on the physical budget. So I, I know it's not... Um, I know it's not a matter of um, moving the current employees. Mr. Jamison mentioned the cost of a search, so we're up to a couple hundred grand and then um, uh, tops. And, and Mr. Crumbo mentioned getting a start on some things. And so let me ask directly, is the intention, if you took the current budget for water department and public works, is the intention to have a sizable increase on top of that for quote unquote department of transportation activities in the upcoming budget no not not that i'm aware of that's the reason uh councilman does i mentioned i don't see any big material change for this uh you know coming budget now look if we see a new stimulus package uh coming out of congress and says hey you have some opportunities here you didn't know about then we can visit those new when they come around. I think uh, folks will be open to that if there's money on the other end, but I'm not anticipating uh, just with uh, making this change of solid waste or you know some of the small things we're talking about for planning here being a material cost uh, to the taxpayer or having a big impact on the budget. Thanks, Mr. Jameson, same answer or different? Uh, no, same answer. I do believe that there is a, a genuine interest in making investments in transportation in this next budget and, and preferring, preferring to do that within a new structure rather than an old structure. Again, costs not attributable to a Department of Transportation infrastructure, but rather just the transportation plan implementation. We can put that in an old bottle or a new bottle. I think the preference is the latter, at least for the administration. So translating, um, no, but expect significant investments um, in planning for a new structure? Well, making the transportation plan improvements that were uh, before the council in December, hoping to do that under a new model rather than an old model. But, so that, that wouldn't be operating budget though, right? Correct. So you're not, you're, you agree with Mr. Crumbo that you're not expecting sizable um, operating budget increases um, directly or indirectly related to this resolution? Agreed. Agreed. I want, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support the uh, um, motion to defer, um, but I, I think um, that, uh, as I mentioned, that, that comment from Mr. Jameson that we need to move it along um, because it might impact the operating budget um, has, um, has me interested in if that's really only 
uh, the cost of a search or whether there's something more that we should know about. Thanks. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Glover, your hand is still up. Is that an old hand or a new one? No, ma'am, it's a new one. Mr. Cooper, <laughs> in order for this to come to fruition, uh, whether we defer it or we don't, in order for this to come to fruition and it, for it to be a long-term solution, would that require a charter amendment under what is proposed now? Under what is proposed in order to create a new Department of Transportation officially and transfer everything in the charter away from public works, it would take a charter amendment. But, you know, like Mr. Jameson said, they operated for a number of years with the stormwater division while technically a public works function in water. So uh, there's, there's no limit on how long you can operate temporarily. Right, and those of us on the council that have been around for a little while realize what kind of fee structures came with that once it did flip. So I, I think it's safe to say, and, and I'll support the deferral right now, but I think it's safe to say that we vet this thing fully, to totally, uh, and because it does require a charter amendment, I think uh, we're doing a disservice to the taxpayers and the people of Nashville if we don't vet it all the way. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Uh... Looking to see if there are any other hands in the queue. I do not see any other hands. We are on the motion to defer for one meeting. Director Cooper, will you take the roll call vote, please? Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Druffel? Aye. Glover? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Fledge? That was an aye. Syracuse? Aye. Tombs? Aye. Vircher? Aye. Nine in favor, zero against. All right, motion carries. This agenda item is deferred for one meeting. Going on to resolution 2021-809, Tombs appropriates to certain accounts for the benefit of the Administrative Department, Davidson County Sheriff's Office, Sports Authority, and Metro Action Commission, $25,742,800. Can I get a motion? So move. Second. So, All right, there is um, an amendment on this. Can I get a, um, a motion to move the amendment? So move. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Um, Director Cooper, can you explain what the amendment does? Yeah, the amendment just makes a correction to an account number. It's housekeeping. Councilwoman Allen, do you, oh, put your hand down. Is there any other discussion on the amendment? All right. Um, Director Cooper, will you take the roll call vote? Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Ruffle? Aye. Glover? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Sledge? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. Tombs? Aye. Vircher? Aye. Nine in favor, zero against. All right, so we are on the, the bill as amended. Can I get a motion to um, approve the bill as amended? So moved. Second. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any discussion? Councilwoman Allen. I have a couple of questions. Um, First of all, once we move this money, does this still leave the fund balance at the 5% requirements that we've worked so hard to get back up to? Um, this is Ken McDonald. I believe I can address that if um, Kevin hasn't jumped in, but yes, it would. Okay. Um, and then second question is, um, are, are any of these surprise costs or ones that we just needed to wait and see that we were in a position to be able to afford so we held them in reserve till now. Is that where they've come from or are they surprises? Yeah. Thank you, Council Lady Allen. That's uh, Director Crumbo. Uh, really, there's uh, no surprises here. Uh, it's uh, commonplace, as I'm sure you know from your experience on the council, to you know give some time uh, to see where we're going to uh, end before we ask for an appropriation one period, and then all of a sudden have a reversal later. So we're around in the quarter end of the last, um, I'm sorry, around in the 
corner into the last quarter of the fiscal year. And I think what we see here is the replenishment of some reserves and then accounting for some costs, you know, with the sheriff's office and so forth that were very foreseeable based on activities that were, you know, all reported to the uh, council. Um, most of what's left beyond the um, insurance law and sheriffs are just nips and tucks for things that will bring us in line uh, with the budget. And as Ms. Um, McDonald said, there's really no material impact on the on the fund balance. I think we'll be in good shape on that. Okay, good. And and just because TIF is so complicated, can you explain what this MDH pay payment is going from and to? Or I see Matt smiling. Maybe he can explain that. <laughs> well, I never want to interrupt uh, Matt. So Matt, go ahead there. I, I will defer to the true expert Joe King <laughs> on presuming Joe's on. I'll let him take it. But if not, I I am prepared. I am here. If you can hear me, this is Joe Kane. Um, the, essentially, what you are looking at is, um, is is reflective of the property tax increase. Um, the, when, the, uh, when we did the refinancing of loans, there were several loans though, that were still there that did not fall under those refinancing. And as we've explained before, 100% of the incremental taxes are pledged to those loans and that's what you're seeing is is a little bit of a bump increase um, based on the property tax change. Great, thank you. And then, and then my final question is, can, can we get just a, a snapshot of where we are on revenues just with regard to what we're doing with this supplemental appropriation? Is that because revenues are where we expected them or better than expected them or where are we at this point? Well, sure. Um, I would tell you these supplementals really are not connected to uh, revenue performance, but rather, you know, things that were foreseeable for us. Um, in other words, when we look at the insurance and legal reserves, we know those have been spent down over a period. And we know for the last year or so that we've seen you know, rising uh, costs and need to replenish those. You know, the sheriff's situation is well known to you. You've heard the, the tips there. So uh, they're not really uh, connected to one another. Um, I will tell you, with respect to revenues, our property taxes and, and so forth are coming in uh, at this moment very close to what they were budgeted. I was a little concerned about that a few weeks ago for the reasons you know. Um, our activity taxes uh, look like they are uh, running ahead of uh, where we had budgeted. And that's things I'll know here uh, very true for the state and uh, many parts of the nation as well. Uh, we lag in our reporting there, not because we want to, but rather it takes a while to process things at the state and let us know what our state shared revenues are and so forth. Uh, so I'll re you know, be reporting more of that as we get a little later here in the year, a little more into the to the budget season, close to the fiscal year and all that. But uh, really the uh, request here is not connected to revenue. Okay, that's all my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Bircher. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. On the, the, the Metro Action Commission, um, those amounts are usually, are those amounts usually subsidized uh, by families? Uh, Council Member, uh, yes, this is John Cooper. Uh, typically, you have families that are paying some portion of the, the cost through, um, you know, whatever fee structure is in place. And since the program has been closed due to COVID, you didn't have that money coming in. So that's primarily the reason for the uh, supplemental. Okay, and for them, uh, John, we didn't have, there wasn't no specific COVID dollars that that agency could have used. Uh, I asked the question and finance checked with them and they said that there were no other grant funds that that, that expense could be charged to. Um, hi, this is Cynthia Croom. Am I allowed to respond to that question? Ms. Croom, you can go ahead. Thank you. So I think what's different, uh, Council Lady Virtue, is that our concern about these dollars is this is not just parent uh, fees. This is also dollars from the state. And so our concern was that uh, whether these dollars could actually be recaptured by Metro because they have a, uh, they're attached to uh, grant funding as well. And so um, that's one of the reasons that we requested that these dollars be returned to us because we did not want Metro to try and capture uh, grant funds in this way. Um, in addition to that, 
this is, as you know, a fee for service. So when we have children, uh, the parents uh, pay a small portion. Uh, the balance of this is also then paid by certificates, which is a part of a grant uh, piece that we have with the state. So these are normal costs that would be associated with uh, the program that we uh, were asking to have returned to the organization. This is not uh, was not tied uh, simply to COVID, but also to the fact that these are dollars that have been earned uh, and in part are also grant funds. Okay. Uh, Chair, is the full amount, the, so the amount that we have in our analysis, is that full amount, the, the, the total amount not including the, the grant portion? Or is it all inclusive? Director Cooper, can you answer that? I don't have it. I would defer to, Ms. to Dr. Kroom. Dr. Kroom. Yes, it's all inclusive. Um, okay. if, yes, it's all inclusive. Okay, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilwoman. I am looking through the queue to see if there are any other hands. Councilwoman Virtue, yours is still up. Do you have something else? All right, seeing no hands, Director Cooper, will you take the roll call? Councilmember Toombs? Yes. This is, yes. This, is, this is Tom Edelman. I have one comment if I can make it, please. Sure, Mr. Edelman. Yeah, on the, uh, the insurance premiums, I just wanted to note that this is uh, that $1.8 million. That's the total amount needed. We're still reviewing uh, some of the individual departments may be able to handle that, but this gets us to the total if, if if we can't work with those departments to make that happen. So I just want to make that note that this is the maximum amount it would be. Thank you. All right, still seeing no hands. Director Cooper, will you take the roll call vote, please? Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Truffle? Aye. Glover? Aye. Mendez? Husband Mendez? Aye. Sledge? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. Toombs? Aye. Bircher? Aye. Nine in favor, zero against. All right, motion carries. Moving on to resolution 2021-810, Toombs. Appropriates $18,838,300. Yes. This is Councilman Oden. I just logged on, so I just want to let Director Cooper know. I would, I'll abstain on that last one since I wasn't involved, but I just want to let you guys know that I was here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Resolution 2021-810, Tombs. Appropriates $18,838,300 from the General Fund Reserve Fund for the purchase of equipment and building repairs for various departments of the Metro government. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Councilman Glover. Thank you, Chair. So this is coming out of reserve funds. It's not coming out of the 4%. Am I reading that correctly or incorrectly? It is the 4% fund. It's the general fund reserve fund. Okay. All right. I, I, that's why I was asking. All right. Thank you. All right. Looking to see if there are any other hands. Seeing none, Director Cooper, will you take the roll call vote, please? Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Druffle? Aye. Glover? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Roten? Aye. Sledge? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. Toombs? Aye. Virtue? Aye. Ten in favor, zero against. All right, motion carries. Resolution 2021-812, Suara, Toombs, Taylor, and Welsh. Approves an amendment to a subrecipient grant agreement from the Metro Development and Housing Agency to the Metro Action Commission to address rent and mortgage assistance for up to three months for eligible households resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. Can I get a motion? I'll move. I'll move. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Is there any discussion? Councilwoman Bircher. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, mine is a real simple question. 
Is this, uh, are these dollars the same that's uh, being used um, uh, for the HOPE program? And if not, uh, are citizens able to use both pots of money? Dr. Kroon? Yes, thank you for the question. Um, the HOPE program is rental assistance only. Uh, this program allows for rent and mortgage, and because we have the 20 million for rental assistance, we will be using this these dollars for the individuals who had already submitted applications um, for help with their mortgage, but we ran out of money. Um, and so this will allow us to continue to serve those individuals with mortgage assistance only uh, that we weren't able to serve in the first set of dollars that MDHA provided for us because we expended all of them. So this will be for mortgage only, uh, not for rent. Again, because the rental assistance program, the HOPE program, only helps with rent and utilities, not with mortgage. Okay, great. That's good to know. Thank you, Dr. Crum. You're welcome. Thank you for the question. All right, looking through to see if I see additional hands. Councilwoman Virtue, your hand is still up. All right, I do not see any other hands. Director Cooper, will you take the roll call vote, please? Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Gruffle? Aye. Glover? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Roten? Aye. Sledge? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. Toombs? Aye. Vercher? Aye. Ten in favor, zero against. All right, motion carries. Moving on to resolution 2021-821, Toombs and Walsh, authorizes the Metro Department of Law to compromise and settle the civil rights claim of Daniel Hambrick against Metro in the amount of $2,250,000. Can I get a motion? So moved. Okay. It's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Councilman Mendez. Thank you. Um, due to the size of this, if uh, legal could discuss the rationale behind the settlement, I'd appreciate it. Director Cooper, Cooper Metro Legal is on. Uh, Allison Bussell is on. Yes. Uh, uh, so is Bob Cooper. Okay. Mr. Cooper. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Mendez, uh, to uh, briefly review this. Uh, this case uh, arises from the uh, Daniel Hambrick shooting. Uh, it is a civil rights claim brought by his estate under federal statute, Section 1983, alleging uh, violations of Fourth Amendment uh, rights against excessive force and Fourteenth Amendment rights of equal protection. Uh, as those, as a claim brought against both uh, the Metro through the police department as well as the individual police officer involved in the shooting. Uh, the claim against uh, Metro government is based on uh, allegations regarding the department's policies and practices. To recover, uh, the uh, plaintiff would have to show that uh, the officer used excessive force that the police department was deliberately indifferent in the training uh, that it provided, indifferent to civil rights of individuals, and that that deliberate indifference resulted in uh, the violation of civil rights alleged. Um, now, uh, of those final two factors, the second and third factor, which relate to the department and its policies and practices, uh, it is Metro Legal's belief that the facts ultimately do not support those allegations, but a claim of that sort in excessive force cases is difficult to prevail on summary judgment. And so this case is likely to go to trial. Uh, jury trials in cases of this type are difficult to predict. Uh, and if you look at the record for cases of this sort across the nation, there have been several multi-million dollar verdicts. Uh, and a recovery of a, of a verdict would also uh, expose the Metro to uh, attorney fee uh, petitions also by plaintiff's counsel. Uh, in addition, uh, we would expect that this case, because it would go to trial and unlikely to appeal, would uh, take years of litigation uh, and that uh, the cost to Metro uh, would be significant and the cost of litigating by themselves would likely equal or exceed $1 million. 
So given the potential exposure, uh, the cost of litigation, uh, and um, uh, the fact that this uh, litigation could take an ex extended period of time uh, in a mediation uh, that was ordered by the court uh, that involved uh, the plaintiffs, Metro, and the police officer. Uh, it was agreed that uh, $2.25 million uh, was an appropriate settlement for all parties, uh, reflecting uh, the uh, risk to all sides in what a final, uh, final decision would be. Um, thanks. Let me just ask you a couple of quick follow-ups. Um, Sorry, uh, Councilman Mendez can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Okay. Can you guys hear me? Anybody? You guys hear me? All right. I can hear. Uh, thanks. Just a couple of follow-ups. Um, obviously, um, given the uh, what, well, I'll just ask it. This are there any? Um, caps on damages here due to Governmental Tort Liability Act? There are no caps. This is a federal claim under federal statute that preempts any uh, state or local caps on liability. All right, and so like you said, that means that uh, if there's a loss, the um, attorney's fees provision under federal law, 1983 uh, law would apply. Um, the, the other area, which maybe this is in the analysis, but I, I I've didn't get a chance to look at it. Um, does the officer um, get a release from civil liability out of the settlement also? Yes, uh, the settlement of this case uh, involves a release of all claims uh, against both Metro and the police officer. Uh, the uh, Those claims will be dismissed with prejudice. So it resolves all uh, civil claims arising out of this set of facts. Um, and can you discuss um, the thinking behind um, or the rationale for uh, negotiating a release for the officer in this situation? Uh, certainly, we um, keep in mind that uh, Metro is uh, representing uh, both uh, the uh, government as a whole and the officer so that uh, if the uh, settlement applied only to Metro, uh, Metropolitan Government would continue to incur significant costs uh, related to the defense of uh, Officer Delkey. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, those, uh, the costs of defending Metro Government are part of the Metro legal budget. Uh, the costs that we were trying to avoid going forward uh, were you know, experts that would have to be hired uh, by both sides and the legal fees uh, that would be incurred by Officer Delkey, who is being defended pursuant to Metro code. So the cleanest thing is to bring the entire lawsuit to a, to a close. Um, thank you, sir. All right, looking through the queue to see if there are any additional hands. Seeing none, Director Cooper, you take the roll call vote, please. Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Gruffle? Aye. Glover? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Roten? Aye. Sledge? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. Toombs? Aye. Vercher? Aye. Ten in favor, zero against. Motion carries. Moving on to late resolution from Toombs, approves a grant from State Farm to the Nashville Fire Department for the acquisition and training of an accelerant detection K-9 team. Can I get a motion? So moved. It's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. Director Cooper, you take the roll call vote, please. Allen? Aye. Benedict? I was hoping for an ill-timed dog bark here, but instead I'll say aye. Gruffle? Aye. Glover? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Sledge? Aye. I'm sorry, Roten? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. Toombs? Aye. Vercher? Aye. Ten in favor, zero against. Motion carries. Moving on to our last item, which is 
uh, Bill 2021-617, O'Connell, Murphy, and others. Repeals resolution number RS-2020-154 pertaining to the $10 million annual Metro Water Services payment in lieu of taxes and amending chapter 15.32 of the Metro Code to reduce water rates to offset the $10 million. There is a letter from the sponsor to defer one meeting. Uh, can Move. I, yes. So Move to defer one meeting or second. It's been properly moved and seconded to defer one meeting. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, Director Cooper, you take the roll call vote, please. Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Truffle? Aye. Glover? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Roten? Aye. Wedge? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. Toombs? Aye. Bircher? Councilmember Vercher? Aye. 10 in favor, zero against. Motion carries. And that's the last thing on the agenda. Director Cooper, uh, is there any uh, yes. uh, I apologize for interrupting. Uh, this is Councilmember Van Rees. Uh, may I be recognized for a second? Sure, Councilwoman. Um, uh, Attorney uh, John Cooper, do we have the late filed on this agenda as well for the uh, late filed ordinance? I think the late filed ordinance was just going to, um, it, it was not uh, on the budget and finance agenda. It was on other committees, but not budget and finance. Okay, thank you. I wanted to make sure we closed shop. Thank you very much. All right, Director Cooper, is that it? Is there anything that I'm forgetting? Ma'am, that covers it. All right, well, budget and finance committee is adjourned. Thank you.